Hi, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and today we're going to be going over my Mahar Nirvana, Virena, Esperia Dia deck profile. Yay! So, this is new support that came out in DBT04, Awakening of Chakrabarthi. This deck is a little bit different than the previous Overdress decks. It's kind of more about turboing out Overdress as much as you possibly can and trying to get an advantage out of that. And then also just pushing for the kill with uh, your Overdress Grade 3s and Espirata or Espir Esparadia. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started on the deck profile. Uh, we're gonna go through the right deck real quick, starting off with Trickstar as our starter. Yes. So we're not using Sunrise Egg, and the reason for that is because we wanna get Trickstar into the drop zone as soon as possible. So with the skill of Rayu, since Rayu lets you Soul Blast to then search for a Virena, you're gonna be Soul Blasting your Trickstar. So that way you have a Trickstar guaranteed in your drop and you kind of like pulling out your Trickstars as fast as you can, you know, kind of turboing out, get all those draws. That's kind of the focus of it. We're also only running three Trickstars in the main deck. So that's why for space issues, we got Trickstar as our starter, just so we can guarantee we see it. We have our grade one, which is Blaze Maiden Reno. Reno's skill is when it's rode upon by Rayu, you search your deck for Trickstar, call it to rear. So that way you have one on the rear, and then if it stays on the board, you can Soul Blast the other Trickstar, call it back with Nirvana. That way you have two Trickstars or two Overdress units you can work with for your turn. Um, second skill is when it attacks, it gets 2k. That's pretty much it. Our grade two for our ride deck is Rayu. So when this is rode upon by Chakrabar the Dragon, Nirvana, you Soul Blast one, search your deck for Virena, add it to your hand, shuffle. Has the same skill as Reno where it gets 2k when it attacks, but it's mostly just for the fact that it searches out an overdress unit and it's deck thinning, so it doesn't, doesn't hurt. Grade three is Nirvana, so kind of obvious there. First skill is act once per turn, you discard a card, choose a grade zero from your drop, call to rare. So that's gonna be the trick star that you Soul Blast. And then the second skill is when it attacks, counterblast one, this unit and all your units in the overdress state get 10k. So just a little, little boost there. Um, yep, that's pretty much it for the right deck. And kind of go ahead and explain how the deck works with the main deck. So we're gonna start off with our grade fours. We're running four copies of Chakrabar the Dragon, Mahar, Nirvana. Talk about the true dragon, sorry. Very similar skill to grade three Nirvana. First skill is during your turn, if you have a unit in the over overdress state, your front row gets 10K. So you get the 10K with the counter blast. And the second skill is once per turn, you counter blast one, put a card with Nirvana in its name from your hand or soul into your drop zone. And you choose a grade zero from your drop, you call it. Choose one of your opponent's vanguards. And if your opponent has four or less damage, you deal one damage to your opponent. They kind of switch costs. So instead of the counter blast for the 10K, it's now counter kind of blast to call the zero, but you get to deal a damage to your opponent. Your opponent does perform a damage check. So that means if they do get a trigger, it does go off. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. The grade four with triple drive. Uh, it doesn't have Persona Ride, so there's no incentive to keep rewriting, but since you have to discard your Nirvana anyways, you're just gonna run four because you wanna use them as discard cost, and you're gonna be soul blasting the one that you wrote on top of the grade three Nirvana. So that's pretty much how Mahar Nirvana works. You're just using this to deal your opponent damage, kind of close out the game as fast as you can, just pressuring your opponent, and then you'll get the 10K passively anyways, so that's good to have. Next up for our other grade fours, well, I'm only running two copies of Irena Espararidia. I'm only running it at two just for space issues, but you can kind of play around the ratios and bump it up to three if you want. First skill, it's Overdress over Trickstar. Its skill is when it's placed on rear. If it's in the Overdress state, you put all Trickstars and cards with the Overdress ability from your drop into this unit's original dress. So that's another reason why we're running Trickstar as our starter, because if you Soul Blast the Trickstar, you have another trick star in your drop so you just shove a bunch of them into Spiriata's soul. Soul, oh my God, I'm talking like buddy fight. <laughs> into its original dress. Rear guard, once per turn. When your Vanguard attacks, you Soul Blast one, you stand this unit, this gets 5K for each of this unit's original dress. So everything's stacked underneath this. It's gonna get 5K for every card. And the fact that you can swing with this and then you can restand it and then it gets another big boost is really good. It's gonna be 23 by itself because of Mahar Nirvana's passive where 
everything gets plus 10. So this is a really great card. It's a great force, so the only thing is it does get kind of clunky early game, so running it at the two works fine so far. You could play around, like I said, the ratios bump up to three, but I think the four is still good because the other overdress units are still pretty decent. All right, next up, we're going into grade threes. Three copies of Virena Expecta. Virena Expecta skills, it overdress only over a unit that's already in the overdress state, so it can't be just over Trickstar. First, continuous regret skills. This gets the power of all the original dress, so including the Trickstar and the grade two or grade three, whatever is stacked or anything, it gains the base power of all of them. And the auto skill is when it attacks a grade three or greater vanguard. If this is in the overdress state, you kind of blast one. It gets 15k in a crit, and at the end of the battle, you put everything that's stacked under this in the original dress to your drop zone. So this also helps fuel Esperiadia, um, because when you place this, it takes everything with the overdress ability and trick stars and shoves it in here. So you go into this, you use its skill, everything goes to drop. Let's say this dies, pull out trick star, overdress and then everything just goes right back into it. This helps fuel grade four Virena. It's also just a really good pressure card. It's the fact that it gains a crit and you don't have to really worry about um, Seraph Snow or Seraph Pure Light because if they target this for their prison, you're already put everything in the original dress to drop so you're not losing a bunch of your units. So really great card. I love this. Continuing on to our grade threes, we're running three copies of Valiente. Valiente is back, yes. So if you did pick up Valiente's back in set one and they kind of got outclassed by Urger, and now it's back. We're not running Urger in the deck anymore because Urger only works with the grade three Nirvana. Valiente's skill, in case you didn't remember, it's uh, you can overdrift th this over a trick star or a grade three or less unit that's already in the overdress state. So you can just stack this over, over anything that's in overdress as long as it's grade three or less. First continuous skill is it gets 5k for each of the original dress. Second skill is once per turn, when the attack of this unit in the overdress state hits, can I boss one, discard a card for hand, stand this unit. So it does restand, it just is an on hit, but it's still nice to have as just like a pressure card for when it swings, has big number. Your opponent's like, oh, but if I take this, it's gonna be restand and then they get to attack again. So, you know, it's still a really decent card, but the most important thing we're really running this card for is the fact that you can just keep stacking overdresses on top of each other. Now I'm going to get into that right now because this is the main focus of the whole deck. Pay attention ladies and gentlemen, this is how the deck functions. We're running four copies of the order Prayer of Resonating Wishes. What this card does is you pay the cost with Counterblast 1, you choose your Vanguard, and until the end of the turn, it gets the auto ability. When your rear guard is placed, and if it was in the overdress, you draw a card and your Vanguard gets 5k. So the idea here, you activate the order and give your Vanguard the passive skill so that you can just keep on overdressing. So if you got your Trick Star, and then you're gonna go into your, boom, Valiente, you draw a card. Boom, Expecta, you draw a card. You wanna keep going? Boom, Valiente, you draw a card. Keep on drawing cards just from the fact that you keep stacking overdresses over and over each other. And then you can also, have, you have the great twos. You go this, Firena, Valiente, Expecta. Every time you're overdressing, you're drawing a card. And that's why we're running for the order. The whole goal of this deck is to be able to find the pieces you need as soon as you can so they can ride Mahar and then deal your opponent damage and just go super aggressive at your opponent in one big blow. I really like this play style for Nirvana just because it seems really fun to just keep keeping on like boom, 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 stack cards, stack cards, stack cards. It's like playing jackknife in buddy fight. You just keep on going into a new jackknife over and over and over again. Your Vanguard is getting a bunch of power from this. So when your Vanguard swings, they're basically gonna have to PG it. So that leaves room for your other grade threes like Expecta and Valiente. Val uh, Expecta gains a crit and Valiente has that on hit pressure. So your opponent is gonna have to decide what they're gonna use the PG on. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on and how aggressive this deck really is. Let's go on to the rest of the main deck. A good old fashioned classic overdress card that we don't ever want to get rid of. It is Virena Arcs. Skill is you overdress it over Trickstar. When it's placed, if it's an overdress, you kind of blast one, draw two cards, 
this gets 5K. You're pretty much always gonna be doing this as soon as you can see it. Usually the minute you ride to grade two, you search out Trickstar, put arcs over it, you draw some more cards. It's a good consistent resource card. Uh, it gains 5K too, which doesn't hurt. So, but this is always good because you can use this part of the combo. Overdress, counterblast, draw two. You overdress, you draw a card. Overdress again, draw a card. So it keeps going. The draws just don't stop. Lastly for grade twos, uh, Virena. We're running two just because if you damage one, you can still search the other. It's still a good overdress target. And like I said before, if you use the prayer order, overdress for free, you draw a card. So you didn't really lose anything. The fact that you pull it out of your deck for free just from playing the ride deck, overall, it's just a free card. Definitely should run at least two Virena. Next up, we're going into grade ones, starting with a new card. Blaze Pole Monk Retsuji, that's how you pronounce his name. The skill is when this is placed on the rear guard circle, you kind of blast one, choose up to one card with the overdress ability in your drop, put it in your hand. If you're at grade four, if your vanguard's at grade four, you counter charge, meaning you got it for free. So if you have one face up damage and you decide, oh, you know what, before I before I use Mahar's skill to deal damage, I'm gonna call Pole Monk. I'm gonna get an overdress card, like anything, literally anything you need for the combo. If you just need the grade four and you ditched it early, uh, Pole Monk is gonna get it back for you. If you need expected just for pressure, if you want arcs back for draws, you counter blast, get it back, and then because you're on grade four, you counter charge, free card. And then you, use, you can use that counter blast to do your opponent a damage. So I really like Retsuji. I know people are dropping it completely just to run more grade threes or grade fours. Uh, the grade four, just run more by arenas in general. Um, I just like the consistency and the fact that one, it pays itself back. So it's still a great card. You're not really losing any resources. It gives you a free card of your choice in your drop zone and it's just helps you kind of like toolbox a little bit out of your drop zone. So I really like the card. I think I only need it at two because any more would just kind of interrupt the ratios. You could also just drop this to one just because it's a good free throw down, grab something back. Uh, but I'm just running two for consistency's sake. Lastly, for grade ones, four PGs, twin buckler dragon. It's the one from set one. It's the one where if you have two or more in hand, you have to discard, but if you have one or less, you don't have to discard. PGs are good, so run four of your DBT01 PGs if you can. On to the grade zeros, before we get into the triggers, uh, two trick stars in the main deck. So we have a total of three trick stars. We have the one in the ride deck, and then we have the two in the main deck. This is mostly just because of space issues, and just because you want to be able to find your one trick star and just kind of boom, 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 overdress, 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 overdress. Drawing into too many trick stars is just kind of be like, ah, oh, this is just kind of whatever. There's too many. Like, I don't really know what I'm really doing with all of these. I don't really need them. I can just pull them back with Mahar or I can just, you know, go with my full combo right from the get go. So the two trick star works fine. Uh, if you really feel like you need a more and more trick star, you can drop the, the pole monks but I really think the pull monks really help with just the consistency of getting that order combo off. You really only need the one trick star in your main deck and the one that you got from your ride deck that you soul blasted out. The two is just for consistency and the rest of the deck kind of revolves around that. Now we're going on to triggers, starting off with our over trigger, Drag Veda. So Drag Veda, like every over trigger, Hundo Mill, if you do it during drive check, you, you know, get the additional effect. The additional effect is choose your Vanguard and you stand it. So what's really fun is because you're going to be giving your Vanguard a bunch of power from the order card. So every time you overdress, Vanguard gets 5k. So theoretically, let's say you overdress three times, that's plus 15, plus the skill of Mahar that puts your Vanguard at 38 by itself without triggers. So if you over, if you get the over trigger and you restand your Vanguard, your Vanguard's swinging for another 38K by itself with triple drive. We're running Drag Veda. <laughs> Drag Veda is the go-to over trigger for this deck. Going on to the rest of the triggers, this is a newer card. Three draw triggers. This is the new draw that gains shield, like the, the front trigger, sorry, from DBT02. It's if your opponent's at grade three or greater, this gets 5K shield. So now we have draws with 10K shield. Draw triggers, drawing cards is kind of the focus of the deck. 
but also it has shield, so now there's more incentive to draw, play draw triggers in this deck. Mahara already gives power to the front row. All the overdress units, uh, the grade three and grade four of arenas give themselves so much power just for stacking their overdresses. So fronts are kind of redundant and draws just help you get resources. So that's why we're running draw triggers. Keeping it going with the rest of the trigger lineup, we're running for Burning Flail. Burning Flail is a crit and it's a crit with skill. Its skill is at the end of the battle that this boosts, you put it into your soul, pick a unit, it gets 2k. The skill is kind of whatever, but the skill is still better than a crit without a skill. So that's why we're running it. We're running eight crit just because this deck is all about being super aggressive and you have triple drive anyways. So I would say maximize the fact that you can get triggers off and give them to your rear guards and just kind of push your opponent for damage. Mahar deals damage, expect it has an extra crit, uh, if you give a crit to Valiente and it hits, then I know it's going to restand with the crit anyways. There's just a lot of pressure you can do to your opponent. Uh, and also just Virena Espiriata restands guaranteed. So giving that a crit will also make your opponent be like, oh my God, like there's so much pressure. So I would say you definitely want to run eight crit in this deck. If you could run 12 in standard, I would. Trust me. <laughs> uh, lastly, heal triggers. Uh, the heal from the start deck because aesthetic and it's a heal. So run heal triggers so you can stay alive, keep the damage cap between you and your opponent, not too big. But also I just feel like if you wanted to be super aggro, you could run four fronts, but I feel like I would rather have the heal than the power. It's not really that worth it. I'm gonna be showing you guys just kind of brief rundown of how the main focus of the combo of this deck works so that you can kind of see why there's so many great threes and what the goal of the deck really is. So let's say you're starting your turn, you're about to go into grade three, you already did your arcs while you're on your Rayu, your Rayu turn, so you're just gonna go ahead and start doing your turn. For the most part, you're not gonna really need to worry about the Trick Stars or the grade four um, for Irina, so those would be good discard targets. You're just gonna go ahead and go into Nirvana. Rayu skill, you soul blast a card, you're soul blasting the Trick Star that's in your soul, and you're gonna be searching the Virena. Boom, right? So then, now we're gonna get started with pulling off the combos. You're gonna go ahead and activate the order Prayer of Resonating Wishes, so that way every time you overdress, you draw a card. And your Vanguard's gonna be getting power every time that happens as well. So then you're just gonna go ahead and get started on trying to overdress. So discarding a card from your hand, any card really works, pull out the Trick Star. Then go ahead and start doing your overdresses. So boom, Virena, overdress, you draw a card. Cool, look, I just drew into a grade three. Let's just go ahead and keep going. So, uh, overdress with Valiente. Cool, you can put it over here if you want, depending on how you want to sip column. You draw a card. Cool, that's a good card to have. Let's just keep on going. Overdress, draw a card. Wow, look, I just drew the, the grade four for the following turn. Um, you can keep on going there. Let's overdress again, just to have more stuff that's being stacked underneath the Spirit Eye is gonna go to the drop anyways. Draw a card. I just drew another overdress unit. You can just keep on keeping your hand and still filling up your Aspecta. That way when everything goes a drop for your grade four Virena, you can just shove it all right back in. So you're gonna start your turn, you're gonna swing. You don't really have to use the Nirvana Counterblast, but you definitely wanna use the Aspecta. You're gonna get your twin drive off. Boom, boom, easy peasy. Spectre is gonna get that crit and that power, soul blast everything at the end. This is gonna swing, then the start of your next turn. You're gonna take some damage, and then you're gonna try and protect yourself. Hopefully if you're drawing enough cards that aren't just full of grade threes like I was doing, but you're gonna be drawing some cards, and then your turn's gonna start again. So then you're gonna go into the Mahar. Hopefully you drew into the Mahar from the drawing of the, of the order card. If you have the order card again, you can just keep on doing it again. But now the main focus is just finishing your, for your opponent as much as you possibly can. So you're gonna go ahead, counter blast, you're gonna soul blast your Nirvana, search for a trick star, call it. You could even, if you wanted to, call it over the this stack just so you have more things to shove into your, uh, your other Virena. But it's really up to you what you wanna do with that. For this sake, I'm just gonna say we're gonna keep the stack just cause it's still a pretty good column. Call it on top of the other Specta if it didn't die already. And then you're gonna go ahead and overdress. This is also right after you're gonna deal damage to your opponent. So you got one, two, three, four, 
five, that's five different things in your drop zone from you overdressing repeatedly. Just shoves right underneath the Speriata, so that's plus 10, 20, plus 30K it's gonna get after it restands. So then you just go ahead and start conducting that battle phase. If you, if you want, boom. Throw an Aspecta just to make that even more threatening. So now you just go swing, swing with Van, get your triple drive. Oh, those are some, those are some delicious triggers you got there. You're gonna soul blast, you're gonna restand, and then just destroy your opponent with as much as those aggressive attacks. And you got all of that from being able to keep on stacking overdress and using the resonating wishes to keep on the advantage and still have hand in results of that. So that's pretty much a rundown of how the general combination of the deck works. Uh, every situation is gonna call for different things, but the main goal is to be able to stack overdress as much as possible over Expecta, get a bunch of draws from overdressing, set yourself up for a really big Espiriata, and also drawing cards is gonna help you search out Mahar, so that way you can go right into it as soon as possible. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the combination. That was it for the deck profile. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, just go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That was the Mahar Nirvana, Virena, Esperi, Espa, Esper, Argidia deck profile. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.